Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining our CFE exam review course. We are so excited to have all of you with us in the class. Now, I made this video for me to explain to you what you need to do for you to get ready for our class. You are joining our virtual class, which is going to happen over four weeks. So every week we are going to study one subject and then we recommend you to take the exam over the weekend. So the classes are happening over four weeks, three days a week. The first week is going to be related to investigation techniques. We have three classes. You attend the classes and then you take the exam over the weekend. Next week, the second week will be the financial section. You study the financial section over three days, then you take the exam over the weekend. Then the week uh, after, the third week will be the law section. You study it over one week, then you take the exam over the weekend. Then finally, we have the fraud prevention. You study it over one week and you take the exam over the week. So within four weeks, you can be certified. Now, someone will ask me, yeah, is this enough for me to become certified for the examiner by studying with you for four weeks and passing the exam? The answer is 100%. We already have more than 3,000 delegates who attended our class over four weeks and they were able to pass the exam with us. So it's not a big issue. But where is the challenge? The challenge for you allocating your time. You are going to attend the class with us over the week. During this time, you need to practice the CFE prop questions. So what is the CFE prop questions? When you join our class, we give you the following. We give you the ACFE membership for one year. We give you the, uh, uh, ACF, uh, the CFE exam, which is valid for one year from the time of joining. So you need to complete it within one year. And then we give you the CFE prop course, which is the CFE test bank. They are around 1,400 questions. You need to practice before actually going and taking the exam. For every section, there's around 300 to 400 questions you need to practice. And these questions are organized in a chapter. So based on the classes that we have, for every class, there's different questions related to that class. So my recommendations for you, don't do the pre-assessment. Don't waste your time. Don't do the practice exam. I know so many of my students, they say, I did the practice exam 20 times. It doesn't matter. What you need to focus on? The review questions. Focus on the review questions. Every time we study one subject in the class, what you need to do? You need to go and do the review questions for that subject. So, for example, in the investigation, we finish on the first day the interview section. Go to the interview section inside the CFE prop course in the test bank and do only these questions. Do the review session. Don't do the practice or the pre-assessment. See, when you are going to do them, you are going to answer maybe 70% correct. That's not enough. You need to go and look at the questions you answered incorrectly and do them again. So in that way, at the end of the day, you have 100% answered all the questions correctly. So in the exam, you are going to answer them correctly without an issue. So doing the CFE prop questions are very important while you are studying during the week for you to take your exam over the weekend. And one thing we give you, which is very important, we give you the workbook. The workbook you got is highlighted. It's highlighted with all the questions in the exam. So all the questions that you are gonna get in the exam are gonna be from the highlights. So someone will say, yeah. So the question, the CFE prop, prop uh, 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 course, uh, the test bank, are they similar? They are si the same as the exam? The answer is no. They are exactly easier than the exam. The questions in the exam are tricky. So they are similar, but they are not exactly the same. So if you study them, it will help you. 30% of the questions coming in the exam are coming from the CFE prop questions, which is good. If you study them, you get 30% similar questions. But most of the questions are coming from where? Coming from the book. From the book you have received, the workbook, which is inside it, we have highlighted all the questions in the exam. So if you study them well, plus practicing the questions and scoring 100% in all the section in the review sessions, you will be able to clear the exam. But in addition to that, because you are joining our virtual course, we gave you summary video. So the summary video are a very interesting video around one hour. They are available in English and are in Arabic, summarizing the main concepts in the exam. Before you take the exam, just two hours, three hours, or maybe one day, go and watch the summary video. The summary video will help you understand all the concepts we discussed in the class in a quick and easy way. So in that way, when you are going to take the exam, you are going to remember the information and what are the questions that you are going to get in the exam. 
So watching the summary video is also very important and it is essential. Now, if you are gonna plan your study for the class, what you need to do, you need to submit your CFE exam application at least five days before the class will start. Why? Even if you are not interested in taking the exam, just in case you feel like, oh, wow, th this exam looks easy. I want to take it. That will not, nothing will delay you. So by submitting your CFE exam application, this will not start the uh, uh, deadline for you to take the exam. This is only submitting the exam. So try to make sure you submit the CFE exam application at least five days before the class will start. So you will be good when the class will start, your application will be approved. At the same time, when you are gonna submit your CFE exam application, the process you need to follow, we send it to you in your confirmation email, which is step-by-step. Step. First, you need to log into a CFE website. Then you need to go create a new application. Then it's very important and essential. And this is very critical. This will determine the acceptance or rejection of your application. You need to write your job description with the fraud related tasks. So someone will say, yeah, I, my job is not really a, a, a fraud examination. Yes, you are working in the banking sector. You are working as a bank manager, correct. You have in your job description issues related to fraud. So they don't want you to be fraud examiner, they don't want you to be anti-fraud professional, they want to find in your job description fraud related tasks. For example, you are working in the banking sector, so you are doing with the proper due diligence and account opening, you are looking for any unusual fraudulent transaction when you are reviewing customer's account, you are helping the organization in conducting fraud risk assessment, you are helping the organization implementing fraud risk management, you are helping the organization in evaluating internal control in, in the banking sector related to fraud, you are helping the investigation team in collecting information during an investigation. You are helping the organization in doing the proper anti-money laundering procedures. Uh, you are hoping, uh, you are monitoring customers account for any fraudulent transaction. These are all the fraud related tasks that you need to mention. If you don't mention the proper fraud related tasks in your job description, your application will be rejected. So whatever job you do, regardless of a different industry, different career, different title, definitely you have fraud-related tasks included in it. And the other thing that's very important is the percentages. When you are, well, they are gonna ask you, out of your job, what are the percentages? You need to put certain percentage, 50, 60%, which is a fraud-related internal control. And the rest you can put auditing or you can put whatever you want as you want. But the easiest way to do it is put 100% fraud-related internal control because most of the work you do is related to fraud regardless of you know your job title. So this is very important for you. They are requesting you to have two years experience in fraud-related issues. So by having the proper job description and the uh, 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 allocation of your experience, for at least 50, 60% fraud internal control related, your application will be accepted. This is related to your job experience. Now, if you are gonna submit your CFE exam application, you need also to upload three recommendations, not one. This is not someone will write you a recommendation letter, no. This is a standard form. You will download it from a CFE website called CFE exam recommendation form. You download it and someone will just sign it and fill their information. But this should be your coworker. Only they accept coworker for them to submit your, CF, uh, your CFE recommendation forms. You need three forms from three coworkers. It can be current coworkers or it can be all or previous coworkers. Also, you need to upload your university degree. So you need to go and upload your uh, university degree. If it's not in English, you can translate it yourself into a document in Word and you can upload it as well. But this is very important. You need to upload your university degree. Without that, your application will not progress. You know, you don't need to upload any other certificate. There, you see section called certificate. This is man, uh, optional, not mandatory. And photo, also optional, not mandatory. So once you submit all this information at the end, you can hit the submit button and it will take ACP around five business days to approve your application. And like I said, I recommend you to do it five days before the start will, uh, the class will start. After you do that, once ACFE will approve your application, they will send you an email saying your application is approved and now you are eligible to take the CFE exam application and they send you the instruction. Don't activate the eligibility. The minute you activate the eligibility, submitting the exam is okay, getting approved is okay, but don't activate the eligibility. The minute you activate the eligibility, now 60 days will start. What's the meaning of 60 days? 
from the minute you activate the eligibility for you to take the exam, the meaning you go, start scheduling the first exam, you have 60 days to complete all the exams. So within 60 days, you need to finish all the exams. So let's say you submitted your application today. After five days, they approved it. Now you got an email. It's okay. But if you go and you click, okay, I want to schedule my exam. I want to activate my eligibility. The deadline will start with 60 days. So my suggestion, no, don't do anything. If you feel that you are ready to take the exam within the, the course, based on your study, based on your progress, yes, activate the eligibility and book your exam. Schedule your exam. If you feel not ready yet, wait until you are ready, you can activate the eligibility. But I recommend you, if you feel uh, on the first day of the class, or if you feel when you are watching the recorded sessions before that, you are ready to take the exam, you can activate the eligibility and you can start scheduling your exam. It's very important to schedule your exam in advance because there are limited spots for you to take the exam. And if you are going to take your exam, I recommend you to take the exam in a testing center. Don't take the exam in actually uh, uh, your home where you know they ask you, don't look up, don't look down, move the camera here, there, then you need to see all that. And sometimes you have technical issue, you have internet. My recommendation, you go and you take your exam in a testing center where they provide you everything. So in that way, it's easy for you to take it. It's not complicated, it's a simple process. So this is the best way. And in that way, they, you have no technical issue, you have no internet issue, because anything can affect your exam. If you are taking your exam and you got a phone call, they will stop your exam, they will cancel it. If you are taking your exam, someone knock on the door, they will cancel it. If you are taking your exam and you went down for some reason to pick up something, they will cancel it. So don't go and do it online. But if you have no other option in your country, there is no testing center, you can do it online, but make sure you follow all their requirements. So your exam will not uh, be canceled or stopped or you have technical issue. If you are going to take your exam, you need to finish it, like we said, within 60 days. So all the, the exams need to be finished within 60 days. Now, let's say you finished the first exam and you passed. Congratulations. Next one, you passed. Third one, you passed. Now you have one and the 60 days finished. What will happen? No, you don't need to go and retake the exam. You passed. Whatever you passed, you passed. Finished. What you need to do, you need to go just for the exam that you didn't take yet. You need to go and pay $50 to retake it. So any exam you didn't finish within the 60 days, you have to pay $50 to retake it again. But the exam that you passed and finished, they are okay. No need to do anything about them. So also, if you failed any exam during the 60 days, you can pay $50 again and you can take it again. But you don't have to take it within 50, 60 days. You have to take it within 50, 60 days from the day you pay for to retake it again. So let's say you took the investigation and you failed. You ignored it. You took the rest of the exam, you passed. Now you want to take investigation again, you pay the $50, now you have 60 days to take it again. So in that way, you try to make sure that you take your exam. In case you failed any exam, try to take it again if you want, or you can move it, wait, and later, after you pass the rest of the exam, you can take that exam again. So this 60 days is very important. From the first exam you schedule, or when you activate your exam eligibility, the time will start. But based on my feedback from my students, usually they pass the exam within what? Within three uh, to four weeks. Because if you are attending my class, every week you study one subject, you can take the exam over the weekend and within four weeks you will be certified. But you need to understand that the questions in the exams are more tricky. The questions in the exam, they are not all true and false. They are maybe getting one or three or maybe maximum five true and false. The rest, they are very long questions, complicated but it's not an issue. If you study whatever we teach you in the class, you will pass the exam 100%. We already have thousands of students who pass the exam. And not only pass the exam, some of them scored 100%, 99%. The meaning they answer everything correct. What we teach you is enough if you study and focus in the exam. When the questions are going to come in the exam, it's not going to be the same easy way you are studying. It's not going to be direct question. It's going to be tricky question. So you need to use your mind and manage your time for you to be able to finish all the questions in the correct uh, way and within the time that you have. So this is very important. This is why practicing the questions during the class is very essential. It will help you in preparing for the exam. Now, after you pass all your exams and your, uh, the situation finished, what will happen? You need to go check your address at acfe.com to make sure that the address listed in your account is the correct address with the zip code, with the city, with the street number, with the 
country, everything is correct. And then within eight, uh, uh, six to eight weeks, ACFE will ship the CFE certificate to you. So this once this process is done, now you are certified for the examiner. And after that, every year you have to renew your membership to keep the certificate. If you don't renew your membership, your certificate will be gone. So I thought to share with you this, you know, basic information for you to understand how, what you need to do, how you need to prepare, and definitely we can help you as we help, you know, thousands of students over the last 10 years to become certified for the examiner in an easy and simple way. If you have any questions, you can always reach out directly to me on WhatsApp or by email or by phone call, so that way we can help you in this process. I wish you all the best. I'm sure that if you follow all my advice during the class, and that the, uh, the tips that I shared with you here today, that you are going to clear your exam from the first time with no issue. Wish you the best. Keep focused, study, and you will succeed.